Lynn again. Um, this time I'm presenting, and the part of the thing that I did not tell you is that I probably should have told you where I actually work when I'm not doing mock trial things. I'm actually from the Public Defender's Office. I'm from Milwaukee, and I do primarily appeals, but I did do trials at one time. Uh, the person who's presenting with me is Robert Howman, who is the who is the teacher coach for Green Bay East High School. And what we're going to be presenting on is coaching to achieve educational objectives and goals. And I see some faces dropping. What we're really talking about, I think, can pretty much be summed up. We want to talk about the problems that come up with coaching when you're not coaching solely to win, which I don't think anybody in this room really is doing, but to let the kids get something out of it and have a lot of fun. And we want to go through some of the things there. Um, one thing that's kind of cool uh, for Ellen and myself, we've, we both have been on both sides of the fence um, in education and in law. Um, so we've been able to probably in, in both our programs build some bridges a little more naturally than it might be for some other schools. And I'll try to touch on that as well. Um, so one thing that, that you heard uh, very well by, by Janelle and by Kevin today, um, was about positive relationships. You know, it's, uh, coaching is, is just such a, a grand um, venture that it's, it's very much you know, student-adult relationships. Um, to be a good coach you know, is to, you, you, you need to understand uh, the basic human motivation, uh, human behavior, and it's, this is something that doesn't just happen overnight. It, it takes a while. Um, uh, to become a, a, a good coach. The main thing is, you know, your responsibility is so large as a coach, an attorney coach or teacher coach, is that you are helping to unlock uh, your students' potential. That's a, a great thing that happens. It's a huge responsibility as well. Okay. Um, the perspective about mock trial, um, and uh, especially anybody who's coming into this is at mock trial, this is about the kids. It, it is about the students. Um, and these are only high school students. And not everybody's going, coming into it because they want to be in law. Um, and not every kid coming out of it is going to be in law. And we think that that's a very important thing to, to remember <coughs> as you get into this. And what we see in our manuals and on the website as well, the, the goals of mock trial um, that, are, that are printed uh, uh, everywhere in Wisconsin, mock trial are very awesome. Uh, the improved basic skills, a fun, rewarding, and, mem and memorable experience, teamwork, collaboration, cooperation. Um, One of the things that was interesting was when we were talking about this presentation, we're talking about mock trial you'll notice that winning isn't on the list. And as a matter of fact, I think one of the things that we discovered is the team for me that I think learned the most was the team that I allowed to fail. And he had the same experience. Now, what do you mean I allowed the team to fail? Well, I was coaching one year, and we tried an experiment with, for us, which was to have a varsity and a junior varsity. And what happened was the varsity got there and decided having gotten to varsity, they had done pretty much all that needed to be accomplished. And they were pretty bright kids, and they could pick things up. And it wasn't that they did nothing, because just by sitting there, this was a group of kids who could pick things up pretty quickly. But they didn't really work as a team. That was a team that had the potential to do wonderful things, and they didn't. And we hit the first scrimmage, and we sat back and thought, oh, they'll get it now. And they didn't. And we let them go to the second scrimmage. And they were a disaster of a team. Now, what was interesting was, it wasn't just that group that was beginning, that, that, that something was going on with. Something was going on with the junior varsity, who got to play them in one round and said, hey, wait a minute. We can beat them. And what ended up happening that year was, the junior varsity did tremendously well. Uh, they came in second in regionals, despite the fact that we sent three kids home with intestinal flu during the course of the day. Um, the varsity <laughs> team, who thought they were just going to be great shakes, did horribly.
Now this was a group of kids that I happened to know quite well, most of them before they got on the team. That was because they were the same year as my daughter, who was not on the team. And to this day, a couple of them, and they're kids that I've kept some contact with, say that that was the time that nobody had let them just mess up before. And that was when they realized, you know, you can't just get by on a smile and being very, very bright. And that may have been more important probably to what they ever end up doing in the long run than anything we could have got done. And of that team, one of them's going to law school now and doing quite well. I think that, that and that does, that goes to building the foundation for future success is, is what Ellen did with, with her, her students, a valuable lesson and hopefully learned. Um, and this comes about too, it's, it's, it's your commitment as well. What is your, your, your commitment, you know, as a coach? Um, there's no question about it, you have to be committed to your students, just like, you know, Ellen making a tough decision there is committed to their welfare. Kids, of course, know, and those of you who are coaching, you know this. They know if you're genuine, if you really do care, if, or if you really don't. Um, mock trial, there, there are different things about it. Um, if you're a new coach, uh, and I think especially if you're coming you know, from the law profession, um, like I did, there are some things that are very different here. And, um, and you need to understand those things before you start teaching, before you start teaching. Um, you're asking kids to commit to a schedule. You're asking kids to commit to practices, to scrimmages, tournaments. Well, you need to commit as well. You absolutely must. Um, we've had a, a, a number of different attorney coaches uh, in our school, and I've dismissed quite a few as well, simply because they, they, they promised something and couldn't deliver on that promise, and that was the time needed to, to the kids. Um, Commitment to your fellow coaches, you know, commitment to your own preparation, not to come in at a practice without knowing anything about the materials um, at all, except to come in, grace us with your presence and, and, and your great legal mind versus, you know, what work have you done, you know, before you start working with the kids. Okay? And I think part of that is that there's a communication thing. As was mentioned, both of us have both taught and been attorneys. My first career was as a special education teacher. So I come in knowing certain kinds of, of things about students and about what I can expect. And the truth is, for most teams, in a very real way with new attorney coaches, the onus for that, and it may be unfair, is on the teacher coach because the attorney coach in many cases doesn't even know what they don't know. And some of the worst are the ones who have teenagers themselves and think all teenagers are like their teenager. Um, you need to provide them, they'll have some of the ideas about what mock trial is, what the, what the legal thing is. You may need to provide them some of the background on dealing with students, on dealing with your students because their student may be different than your typical student. Um, there are all sorts of kids out there, and we all know that. Um, there are the kids who need to be motivated. There are the kids who are motivated. There are the kids who have some very big obstacles in their way that your attorney may never have really encountered in dealing with kids. They're not going to know how to deal with that. They're going to take their cue from you but you also need to let them know that that matters. Because a lot of times I think attorneys come into this wanting to do a very good job, wanting to do a very good job for you, and thinking they just have to take what's in their head and give it to the kids. And you're the one who knows that that's not quite how it works. And you need to communicate to that attorney, and sometimes that means you need to make some tough calls about what information you give the attorney. Because I can tell you as a coach, I didn't like to be blindsided by information that was going to become obvious down the road out of some idea that 
I think you have to be careful about confidential information, but there's some information that just comes out, and if I'm going to deal with a student, it's really much easier if I know it up front. You know it. I don't. And, and that's one thing that we do and, and really want to stress to, to teams that may not be doing this or, or especially new teams, that when putting together a staff of coaches or bringing someone else in, you, you do need to invest the time in, in orientation. Um, what is it that you're expecting them to do? What are the goals of the program? What are the goals for the students? The detailed information, student information that, that Ellen's talking about, the strengths, the interests, the limitations of, of each student. We also provide a de detailed job description for our coaches. You're responsible for this, you're responsible for that. These are the things that need to be done. Here's the calendar that those things need to be done in. Um, your lines of communication. And then something else that, that uh, especially teacher coaches are responsible for is, is what are the school policies? You know, attorney coaches need to know what are the school policies and procedures and those kinds of things. Um, academic eligibility, you know, that type of, th that, that type of thing as well. Um, so coming into it as a coach, you know, size up the situation. What are, what are your potential obstacles? What are the challenges that, that you have? Um, of course, today, funding, you know, is, is a big thing. Time constraints. Uh, I'm an attorney coach. I want to help. The, this is the amount of time that I can give. This is what I, I know I can give. Again, don't promise anything more than that. You know, don't say you can do something that you, you really won't be able to deliver on. Um, understand that, you know, we, we need to understand everybody's different backgrounds. Uh, at one point, we had uh, two teacher attorneys and seven, I mean, we had two teacher coaches and seven uh, attorney coaches on our team. Um, all very different. And, of course, that's a lot of type A personalities in the room. You get through that and just imagine, you know, the, the enormous amount of information that you have. You know, with that experience. Um, okay. uh, the coaching process itself, um, you know, of course you have, these are, these are very basic. You know, you have your short and long-term planning. Um, you know, you have your calendar, which absolutely must interface with school activities, uh, WKCE testing, this, that, everything else that a school, you know, has uh, going that it needs to do. Uh, you have, you know, you assess your, your resources. You, if you don't have enough resources, what's your plan to get those resources? Um, your scrimmages that, that Janelle and, and Kevin talked about, those need to be scheduled way in advance. Um, and then, of course, the delivery of instruction, developing the instructional materials and, and how you're going to meet those individual